Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com, to another blog and to another podcast. Welcome to those who access the podcast through Apple Podcasts, Rumble, Spotify, and YouTube. Today we continue in our study of the book of Genesis. We're in chapter 19, verses 26 through 29, which reads, But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. Then he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain. And he saw, and behold, the smoke of the land, which went up like the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass, when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overflow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had dwelt. That's Genesis chapter 19, verses 26 through 29. Today we return to our study of Genesis chapter 19, where God sent two angels to warn Lot and anyone else in the city who believed in the God of the Bible to leave the city before God destroyed it with brimstone and fire from heaven. Before the destruction came upon Sodom, Lot and his family left very quickly and just in time. In verse 26 of today's passage, we read, But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Lot's wife made a bad choice as the brimstone and fire was falling down on the city of Sodom. For whatever reason, be it out of curiosity or sadness at the loss of possessions or friends, Lot's wife turned back to look gazingly. Earlier, the angels had given the divine warning to not even look back at the city, but Lot's wife ignored that command. Lot's wife was a person who had made a profession of faith in the God of the Bible. Her heart was knit to the city of Sodom so much that she looked back, gazingly. Many, down through the years, have said this story is a myth, but I beg to differ. On that day in Sodom, as Lot and his family were approaching Zoar, a meteor zoomed into the atmosphere and in an airburst about one kilometer high completed the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah and set in motion a sequence of physical events that led to Lot's wife being covered in salt. On that day, a meteor entered into the Earth's atmosphere at an extremely fast velocity. When it hit the thicker part of the atmosphere, the pressure on the meteor exceeded the molecular forces holding the meteor together. At that point, The meteor broke into much smaller pieces and effectively dumped its kinetic energy into the atmosphere. The altitude at which this happened, its speed, the type of material the meteor was made of, the angle of entry, and the density of the meteor had a very intense effect on the entire area. Megatons of TNT worth of energy were imparted into the air, which caused very high temperatures, which created a blast wave to propagate downward. The archaeological findings down through the years have proven this. In fact, archaeologists have found melted rock and bubbles in melted zircons, which required intense temperatures. Since Lot's wife was lagging behind, looking back longingly at where her life had been, and she had not reached a sufficiently long enough distance from the event, she would have been hit with superheated water. When that water touched her relatively cold body, it deposited a layer of salt and anhydrate all over everything it touched as the liquid exploded into steam. The salt and anhydrate cooled, turning her into a pillar of salt. 
The Lord Jesus in Luke chapter 17 referred to this incident in a solemn warning. He said, remember Lot's wife. Whoever tries to keep their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life will preserve it. The Lord Jesus told us to remember Lot's wife, but we know almost nothing about her. We do not know where she was born. We do not know when she was born. We do not know who she was born to. We don't know her parents. We don't even know her name. Making her story even more interesting is that it is in the book of Genesis, which is the book of origins. There are more genealogies in Genesis than any other book in the Bible. In the book that is all about people's backgrounds, there's nothing about Lot's wife. The Lord Jesus told us to remember her because her heart was defined mostly by this world. And this world brings with it destruction and misery. Divine warnings are posted along life's highway. The Bible informs us that God has placed eternity in our hearts, which means in every human soul is a God-given awareness that only God can satisfy. C.S. Lewis once said, if we find ourselves with a desire that nothing in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that we were made for another world. In addition, the Bible informs us that the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows forth his handiwork. It tells us that his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that we are without excuse. God warns us through his creation, through his prophets, and through the cross of his own son. In verses 27 and 28 of today's passage, we read, and Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. Then he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain, and he saw. And behold, the smoke of the land which went up like the smoke of a furnace. Just one day earlier, the Lord and the two messengers arrived to announce the coming birth of Isaac. After their meal and assuring Isaac, Sarah that a child would come through her, the Lord told Abraham of his intent to go to Sodom, determine its state, and destroy it. Before he left, Abraham received a promise that if ten righteous people could be found there, he would spare the entire city. It was probably a very sleepless night for Abraham, wondering if Lot had met even the most basic example of being a faithful witness to his wife, children, and at least six others. If he simply had nine converts, the destruction would have been averted. But Abraham seemed to know better because he got up early in the morning and went to the exact spot where he had met and talked with the Lord. From that spot, he could overlook the entire region to the south where Lot lived. It seemed his fears about Lot were well founded. God will always judge sin. He has to. Abraham saw an awful event which he had been foretold would happen. There was no doubt that this was an act of God. He must have been upset at Lot for not being able to drum up nine righteous people and sad about Lot because he was his nephew and friend. Looking at the smoke from a distance, Abraham had to experience much gut-wrenching that day. The Hebrew word translated furnace here is only used four times in the Old Testament. The only other time it's used in a similar manner as when the law was received at Mount Sinai, which was engulfed in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. 
its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked greatly. The New Testament has one such example as well. A time is coming when the judgments of God will come upon the world. In one of them, the very pit of hell will be opened, and as John the Apostle wrote, he saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like a smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. This will happen during the time that we know as the Great Tribulation. In verse 29 of today's passage, we read, And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had dwelt. The term God is Elohim in Hebrew, and it describes the one who administered the judgment. Moses used Elohim to show that God is the judge of all the earth, who is elsewhere described as a consuming fire. He is such to those whose sin has not been atoned for, but for those who have had their sins forgiven, he is our friend. And so God remembered his friend Abraham and rescued Lot in the midst of the overthrow. There is no contradiction because the Lord is God and God is the Lord. The terminology changes for our benefit and understanding of God's nature. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.